Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer. Welcome back to Out of the Park Baseball 23. This is episode number five. And picking up a little bit after where we left off, uh, we played about 10 games now, a little more than that. It's been a couple weeks anyway. Uh, getting Pedrero back healthy, along with all the changes we've made, have has definitely made a difference. Uh, we've actually won seven from our last 10, where we had actually only won four out of about 25 games uh, over that run before it. So massive, massive improvement. But of course, there's been home games, you know, during this stretch and, you know, you tend to play better at home than you do on the road. And so yeah, it's not a massive sign. Uh, what it has done, though, is at least for the moment, we have equaled the wins of a couple of the teams in the international uh, conference and match their win totals anyway and actually technically find ourselves ahead of them played just over 100 games now into the season 102 out of 142 so we have just 40 games left we are starting to get down towards the end and we are also less than two weeks away now from the trade deadline so the let's move pedrero on so that we get something back for him and not have to spend 40 million on a guy in his mid-30s even if he's good, even if he makes us better, even if we obviously win more games with him than without him, we're not going anywhere this season. We pay him $40 million. We're not going anywhere next season still because he's not going to do it alone. Flint may have to be traded at some point uh, for the same reason, same purpose, but short term, we're, we're, we're not going anywhere. It's a long build, and a guy already in mid-30s is going to start getting worse and his value is going to go down his value is not that high right now being that he's in his mid-30s uh, with an expiring contract and a lot of teams are going to consider that in a trade so already not the greatest value uh, but we're going to lose him at the end of the season if we do nothing and you know unless we bother to spend all that money and no i'm not spending that money to keep him therefore uh, we've got to cash in and we've got one more week and then we're going to make that happen. I don't want to wait right till the deadline as that could go awry if he picks up another injury. He's already had a couple this season. So one more week and then we, uh, we move on from the age of Pedrero. <laughs> same day, same day. Pedrero, day-to-day -day injury, expected to take two weeks back tightness. Now, that doesn't put him on the injured list, at least. Uh, but that just hurt his value short term. And he's 33 now, not 32. So he's already, he's getting on. Let's at least finish the week, and hopefully it'll be rather minor. Here is the card on the fragile Virgilio Pedrero so he is injury proneness is fragile so uh, that adds to the reason to, to send him on his way I mean we've had three injuries with him this season he's missed a big chunk of time he's due a massive pay raise that just doesn't work for me really just doesn't work for me even though he's a tremendous home run hitter it just does not work for me he's had a good season but again it just doesn't work for me he's hit 17 home runs he's got 38 rbi 38 rbi he should be closing in on 60 or 70 by now if he was truly a middle of the lineup kind of guy he's slow he's not he's not a good fielder he's a dh at this point and yeah let's let's go cash in I've pushed it to the limit. We are now one day from the trade deadline, and he just got healthy today. So he's now healthy. Trade value back about where it should be. Let's see what we can get for him. Bill Flores, our closer, has an expiring contract as well, and he's been fantastic. Packaging those two together should get us the maximum return. Flores is somebody I'd like to hang on to, but... There's no reason to spend $4 million on a reliever when relievers are going to be a dime a dozen. They're going to be really easy to replace. So let's use that trade value. 
not a wealth of offers coming in return here uh, in the take what you can get mode because again we're losing these two for nothing at the end of the season Flores I'd be okay spending some money on but you know 29 years of age and like I said relievers are a dime a dozen they are so easily replaceable no matter how good he's been dead even 1.0 whip uh, right about one win above replacement two and a half for Pedrero and even though he's been good that's nowhere near where he should be because of the health issue so what we can get five players five prospects in return a couple guys that are two stars now with a bit of potential both high on the prospect list that's really not ideal but it's better than nothing three outfielders a couple of third basemen all young our minor league depth has drastically improved out of this if nothing else and you know as we had noticed other than the Pedrero part which is gonna hurt because when we've been without him we've struggled when we've been with him we've been okay we're about to be without him permanently uh, but the added depth is is going to start to make the difference that we need long term and it puts more trade pieces these are the kind of players that people want and we could turn around and package them for younger win now type players that'll help us long term uh, if you can keep restocking your minor league system there's a lot of trade value there that can upgrade the the squad overall it's a process it's a process and this is just a step in that process let's do it all right so the lineup's definitely weaker than it was making this move as i didn't get you know the best in return but trey harris is going to take over in left field he's another one of those guys that we moved recently or is one of the guys that was involved in that trade actually i think uh so he's he's gonna step right into that spot in the lineup he can play right field just fine clearly not as good but we got more than one piece back uh, i had a couple empty roster spots so usetta i didn't want to put some guys into that situation where they're in the majors when they don't belong there i didn't want to have to burn a 40-man roster spot usetta started the year uh, with the senior team did not do well but hey at this point i really don't care if we don't do well uh, the worse we do, the better the draft pick. So uh, Usada's back up here. Let him get some experience. Trial by fire. Uh, same thing on the pitching side. Caballero, who started the year up here, has come back up into uh, the senior squad. He actually did pretty well down at AAA. So, uh, and he wasn't doing half bad when we sent him down either. Ibar has been promoted from setup man to closer. Alva has been promoted from middle relief to setup man. And he actually has the best ERA. It's only nine innings though. So uh, he's given up just one run in the nine innings since joining us. He's one of the players we traded for. Uh, as was Ibar, I believe. Yeah, I think both of these guys came to us through a move. Yes, they did. So both of our main guys in the bullpen came that way uh, as as did a lot of this current bullpen we made a lot of moves this season but we are done with the trades let's get on with pushing towards the end of this season let the punishment ensue uh, let's see if we do go back to struggling a little bit with Pedro out we are 21 games below 500 right now uh, we've been hovering at that 20 game mark for a little while now uh, let's see if that blows up again as it did before. Closing in on the end of the season, 17 games to play, and we are 49 and 76, 3 and 7 in the last 10. Yes, we've slipped back down without Pedrero. Yes, we, as expected, got worse and have have taken a bit more in terms of losses since then. And we're just behind Winnipeg right now for the worst record. But that's a good thing in in terms of the draft but of course as we talked about before major leagues get priority they'll have picks one through 30 championship gets 31 to 60 we get 61 to 90 so we'll only be placed 61st that doesn't help us out a whole lot but better than nothing it's you know 29 picks better than whoever wins the league here that'll start to get us on the way 
for the moment two promotion spots albuquerque and reno on the other side it's the matanzas and mexico city that look to be heading up all of them uh, roughly 75 to 80 wins and we're of course at the opposite of that and we are now officially eliminated from the playoffs no surprise there 51 and 80 on the season at this stage now of course out of these moves we've made we did set ourselves up for the future. You have Eddie Ortiz, fifth in the prospect pipeline. Uh, Paxton Squire is sixth. Of course, he's already playing now at the senior level right now, but doing fairly well. I mean, he's got a 3.8. Went above replacement. His whip isn't too bad. His ERA is a little high for our liking, but at 10 and 8, as bad as our team is, that's, that's pretty good. Mari Rhodes is 10th, so we got three players in the top 10 prospects out there. And here's the overall organization in these regards, 5, 6, 10, and then also 34, 36, 38, 40, 50, 76, 94. That is 10 players inside the top 100. Okay, we have 10% in a league where we make up one of 30 teams, where we make up roughly 3%. That's an excellent share. And right now, those 10 players, only one of them is at the major league level. In addition, we have a wide number of players. And most of these guys, most of them came to us through these trades. So we actually do have a high number of prospects. It's good. There's plenty that need to go away, though. Uh, a big change needs to come. In reality, we have about, we'll say about 35. And based on that top 500, there's 31 that are in it. 31 prospects that have a chance at making major league level, essentially, is how they see that. And while we have a lot of work to do, the, this was a massive start. I mean, we, we picked up enough players to make up a roster at the senior level in prospects. They won't necessarily get there. Many of them won't. Many of them will turn around and be traded, but you've, you've got to do something to, to go the right direction, and this is definitely doing something to go in that direction. And, you know, you look at these players at how they've played this season. The wins above replacement has been really, really, really good for most of these guys, whatever level that they're at. And I've only done one big shift of the minor league system in terms of where players are. A lot of those guys were down at that rookie level and I had to you know, bump them up, push them up. Uh, but I followed the advice of my coaching staff, let them do their thing, as I think that's an important step. Uh, we are closing in on 30 games below 500 as we uh, reach near the end of the season here. So yes, we are losing more than we're winning right now. Uh, it's okay though, it's okay. Not finishing the way we would have hoped, uh, just winning one game in the last 10. But 55 and 89 is the final tally on the season. And yes, that is good enough for dead last. But again, part of that was we sabotaged our, our own season at the midway point uh, or just shy of the midway point to build for the future, to go into that rebuild mode, uh, obviously to a much, much higher scale than everybody else. But our payroll is ridiculously small uh, with the exception of one player one player who is you know we have that flexibility he is movable we will be able to trade him if we so choose but otherwise we're, we're going to have a ton of financial flex flexibility and we've picked up close to 30 prospects already to get us started and some of them already in the, the major league roster some of them good enough to be here uh, others will come along. The team itself this year, dead last in runs, next to last in runs given up. Batting average, next to last. Strikeouts, five from the bottom. Defensive efficiency, just a few off the bottom. And home runs went from middle of the road down to 22nd. First with Pedrero's multiple injuries, and then later with his eventual trade. We just weren't hitting the long ball anywhere near as well as we were before that. If you weren't aware, Major League Baseball has adopted a new playoff structure 
for 2022, and that playoff structure exists in each of the leagues. There are now three wild cards instead of two, so there's six playoff teams. The top two division winners have a bye, and then you have the remaining division winner plus three wild cards, where you used to just have those couple, and they now have a three game set for the wild card round uh, to determine which two teams go to then play those two teams with the bye. Three of the four teams that were in the promotion playoff spots or promotion spots have stayed the same Matanzas, Mexico City, and Albuquerque. But instead of Reno, we now have Boise, uh, who pass them up. In fact, a good five games clear. You can see their really good run down the stretch while Reno uh, struggled a bit. Quick overview of the team. Uh, Tony Rivera, eight wins, 12 losses, 5.0 ERA and a 1.44 whip. Uh, Steve Bradshaw, the one who stayed with us the whole season, just 8-16 and 16 for them. And that was four out of five starters being replaced along the way, and the, the fifth one really didn't do terribly well. But the guys who came in were all better. Fussell, Cummings, Squire, all around 3.5 to 4 in the ERA, 1.2 to 1.35 in their whip, did pretty good. Tony Rivera, the last fill-in, yeah, not as good as those guys, but all in all, our pitching staff actually did improve uh, down the stretch. Relievers, you know, I, I think if you exclude the first half of the year where our pitching staff was horrendous, second half of the year, they did pretty okay and mostly young guys. So yeah, step in the right direction. But again, don't expect that relief staff to look much the same come next season as uh, I'll be looking to make quite a few moves in the free agent market trade market and if there's a ton of relievers available in the free agency market I might as well take these guys and package them out and trade them for usable pieces fielders in particular and then just pick up free agents to replace these guys now our backup catcher never did do well but the replacement catcher that we got in after trading ours away, as he was one of those older veteran players, was tolerable. Average around 240, wins above replacement, fairly level. For the infield, Aikens struggled. I think Aikens is somebody we could afford to part ways with. He's about 28, I think, so we'll be looking to move him this offseason. Uh, Willie Lyman came in uh, from trade, didn't do great. Young player, not quite ready. Flint was fantastic. 5.4 wins above the replacement, so he alone got us 5.5 wins this season, and when we only had 55 of those, he he accounted for about 10% of that. You got 25 players on your roster. That's that's a good chunk, right? Flint hit 273, slugging up there, 500, almost double, which means he got a lot of extra bases. Of course, much of that was home runs. 32 home runs out of 100, out of what is it? 144 hits. So 32 homers out of 144 hits, and 77 RBI. So just about triple what he had over the home runs. And you always like to see that number be a bit higher, unlike uh, Pedrero, where it was not even two to one. Meaning a lot of the runs he was batting in came just from long balls and and nothing else. Uh, Flint. A little more well-rounded in that department. 82 runs also. That's 50 additional runs beyond the times he knocked himself in. So others able to bring him in a little bit. I think he was batting number two most of the season, or all of the season. Uh, 114 strikeouts, not bad out of 136 games played. That's a little less than one per game. Sam Nance definitely did a good job and will we'll want to hang on to Nance for a while yet. He's still fairly young, 274 hitter, uh, two wins above replacement. Luke Williams did a pretty okay job coming in for a young player, developing player. Uh, certainly okay, given time. Hopefully he'll develop and become at least a Sam Nance. Uh, and Cornegay did a pretty decent job. Uh, hitting wasn't great, but for us, you know, it was better than nothing. 13 homers, 50 RBI for him, second on the or at least at, on the infield, and yes, actually overall on the team. Okay, the outfield went through a total reshaping, and so 
a lot of guys with limited games played here and you know none of them played a ton the most only one guy got over 100 games and not far beyond that just 368 at bats 40 rbi nine homers though for carrillo 223 bad really bad batting average but when he did it he was bringing guys in right half of his hits netted an rbi uh, which is definitely a better rate than these other guys except for Usetta, just 11 hits but eight rbi for him uh, none of these outfielders playing particularly well a couple guys at 256 just above zero on the wins above replacement none of them were awful and that helps that does help uh but outfield's gonna need some serious upgrading one notable thing about our minor league system the rookie team phenomenal of course they were aided by all of those prospects we were bringing in but that shows that those prospects were way too good for this level but we moved them on well before the end of the season and that team still ended up going 58 and three they only lost three games single a was very good and i uh short season single a team I didn't make hardly any changes there. So we have a lot of young prospects, better young prospects. Uh, our, the regular A team, which did get quite a few of these guys midway through the season, they were very good as well. Our double A team went from bad to much better after I made those moves. They went from below 500 to comfortably above 500. But our triple A team, the guys that are on that step away from major leagues, awful just awful uh worse than our major league team by quite some margin so we have a lot of young prospects but they're just nowhere near major league ready uh, most of those guys we got in through trades have wound up in either the regular single a team or the double a team so they've they've got a ways to go yet to make an impact this is not going to be something fixed next season it's going to take us at least a couple of years to to make the turnaround happen uh, and especially without any sort of draft coming up yet draft is going to be into next season before that happens S expect things to kind of continue as is for a little while but again we have that roster flexibility there's going to be free agents out there we should be able to sign some guys for a reasonable amount of money and we're definitely going to be going after young players not guys in their prime and here is the playoff picture the wild card round is already complete division series best of five so it goes from best of three to best of five to the last two rounds being best of sevens reno has moved on uh, boise has moved on so those are the top two both from our division and that could be part of the reason why we struggled so much this season is the two best teams happen to also be right there with us albuquerque missing montreal beating uh, mexico city to get to the conference series and the crocodiles leading 1-0 in that one though the only one upset that we've seen so far that being the, the montreal expos uh getting on the way and they look poised to head to the professional series world series reno has already qualified for that knocking off Boise so retaking their top pedestal and Montreal does win take takes seven games to get there but it is Reno quickly getting ahead winning the first two games and then they end up sweeping so the Reno Silver have won just in case you were wondering because I certainly was the promotion teams did not change it was based on the regular season record and not the playoffs so even though Reno just won the professional league world series they are not going to be promoted as they were just a wild card team with 83 and 61 for their record boise and albuquerque are still the teams that are going to be going up in the tier above us the championship league it was grand rapids who were promoted it was salt lake city who were also promoted the relegated sides virginia beach and then Chandler Silver Tips are coming down. That's the Patriot League in the Loyalty League, uh, Shreveport, 
and Las Vegas game promotion, while Manchester and Mesa are going to be going down. Here's a quick look at the playoff tree for them. It is the Las Vegas Purple Aces who won the Championship League World Series. It was 4-3 to three for that one over Austin. And in the major leagues, the first relegated sides, the first sides to leave their safety, their sanctum of the major leagues, Baltimore Orioles and Texas Rangers at just 59 and 103. They still ended up playing 162 games this season as I think they had the real world schedule. I believe next season we should expect them to be at the proper amount of games that we have set. Uh, but Colorado and Arizona were the other teams, so both NL West teams are relegated. And in their playoff tree, with those extra games, they are actually not quite done just yet. The Angels beat the Yankees, the Rays beat the White Sox, and then it was the Blue Jays, wow, uh, in the division series. But they lost to the Angels, so the Angels got to the League Championship Series. The Rays beat the Astros 3-2, to two, and the Rays then, in 7, getting to the World Series. In the National League, Milwaukee over New York as St. Louis over San Diego, and then Milwaukee beating the Dodgers, while the St. Louis Cardinals beating the Braves 3-1, to and then finally the Brewers knocking off the Cardinals in six games to make the World Series. So Milwaukee versus Tampa Bay. Not a pair of teams I would expect to see in the World Series. Right now they are tied at a game apiece. Let's finish this one out and see who will be this year's World Series champion. It's going to go the distance. It goes to seven, and it is Milwaukee, the Milwaukee Brewers, winning four to three. Now, I would not 100% rule out that they've won, but gosh, I don't know the last time Milwaukee won a World Series title. I did not realize that Milwaukee won the division title last season, and for the first time in their history, actually looked poised to do something. So, not out of the ordinary not out of the question for milwaukee to be in the playoffs and be making a run but no they have never won a pennant they've won a single league pennant as in the american league way back in 1982 and yes i know once upon a time they were fairly good uh, but the the team that has been in milwaukee since 1970 has never won a championship until the very first year of this playthrough all right let's go ahead and review a couple things on the season now of course there's some elements that never really took place this year there was no draft this season so we didn't have those expenditures they were projected uh, there have not been any international free agents coming through as of yet there's been a handful that were picked up and signed but i've missed those every time i've checked in it's been empty but here we are. Uh, one notable thing was after selling Pedrero, fan attendance did fall off. Now, of course, we had already tanked. We were eliminated from the playoffs, so it might not just have been a matter of selling Pedrero. And Pedrero was injured for a while. Did that have something to do with the fall off in attendance here? Maybe. Was it form? Was this when we were losing and this is when we were winning some more games? I, I don't know. I do not know. Uh, but fan interest fell off just a little bit this season, but overall, we're still looking good. Payroll, $17 million, lowest in the league. Plenty of money for what's to come. Now, of course, it's going up with, uh, with Flint and his coming salary for next year, but we were way below. The club made a ton of money this season compared to expenses. But how much is the owner going to take away from us? How much is he going to take back for himself as a profit? Yeah, we'll, we'll see for that part. But regardless, we, we've got some money to play with for, for the coming season. So I'm not too worried about that part. Now, with all those moves we made, I would trade two players and get four or five in return. So we did add depth not only in terms of quality to the prospects that we had, but in terms of quantity to the number of players that we have in our minor league 
system. Right now we have 22 players in AAA, 25 at the major league level. We have 31 in AA. We have 36 in the regular single A team, 22 in the short season, and 37 in the rookie league. So there are definitely extra players out there. And you know what that means. No, you don't. <laughs> Here's what that means. What that means is I'm going to take a lot of these extra players, especially the older ones like these AAA guys that weren't good enough and aren't ever going to be good enough. I'm going to package them and try to get another prospect in return, a younger prospect in return, somebody with some potential. And that's 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 the system it's it's cycle recycle 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 and just take pieces to get better pieces and build that way throw numbers in this case throw quantity to get quality in return so do the opposite of what we were doing earlier but all ultimately to accomplish the same goal of adding depth to our minor league system that we can either in itself at some point turn those into major league quality players whatever we got to do along the way but right now the plan short term is to take to gut the triple a team now and turn that around for better prospects and their stead all right folks well there's our first season in the books it was not a pretty one but i said this before and i'll say it again i was actually really happy that we were awful in this first season. I love to build from the bottom when we found ourselves in that situation, in that scenario. Now, how do we try to be a winner? Chances are we, we could have been a little bit better than we were instead of 55 and 89. I would not be surprised if we didn't win 65 games this season, maybe even 70 if we pushed or if we tried to play the waiver wire the way we did make those moves a little sooner than we did uh, when we called up what talent we had in the minor leagues at the beginning of the season and you know rework that roster if we do all of that initially yes i think there's 10 to 15 more wins in this team than what we got but then where would we be we'd have all these expiring contracts we would have spent money on pedrero and flint and had no flexibility in the coming season and we would have been a team in trouble and for what what are we going to get with those 10 or 15 more wins nothing we still miss the playoffs we're still one of the worst teams in the league we're still ugly we're still not enjoyable and we're definitely not banking money the way we did this season and not having any talent in the minor league system to to call upon down the road we would have been nowhere absolutely nowhere just for the sake of a few wins so i am more than happy to have tanked the way we did to build because for us there's no relegation we're at the bottom level if you're gonna build build right go big or go home and we went big on the tank side we tanked big time but it's the start of the process and that process is far from done. More work to do, more tanking to come. But that's one season in the books. I'm Decathlon Gamer. Like, comment, subscribe. See you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there. Bye for now.